It's a typical foggy summer morning on the California coast, so it's a great opportunity to shoot some approaches down to minimums and get a look at executing missed approaches. Let's look at three different kinds of missed approaches by looking at three different approach plates. Each one will involve different ways of identifying where the missed approach point is and how and when to execute the missed. First there's the ILS into runway 3-1 at Salinas. An ILS is a precision approach. It uses a localizer for lateral guidance and a glide slope for vertical guidance. This is important because it determines how we'll tell where the missed approach point is. On a precision approach like this one, the missed approach will commence when the aircraft is on the glide slope and reaches the decision altitude, listed in the minimum section here, 302 feet. We can drop an imaginary line then on our profile view to represent the decision altitude of 302 feet. The glide slope intercept occurs at DEBS, which is where the lightning bolt symbol is. We'll intercept at 5,000, so we'll be at that altitude initially. The glide slope needle will be above center. As we fly in, it'll start to come down toward center, and we'll follow it down, keeping the needle centered until we reach the decision altitude of 302 feet. When we get to this point, we can either decide that we have the necessary visual cues to continue down towards the runway, see 91175 for that, or decide that we don't have the visual cues and need to execute a mist. The missed approach point isn't defined as a specific place on this chart because as we said, it occurs on glide slope at the decision altitude, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist at a specific point in actual space. The glide slope has to be centered for us to identify the missed approach point without the aid of GPS or marker beacons. Just as the glide slope needle would move off center if we were higher or lower at this point, so too would it move if we were closer to the runway at the decision altitude where it would show us too high or if we move further away and we were too low. So the missed approach point is where the decision altitude and glide slope angle intersect. It's at this point that we both decide to go missed and execute that missed procedure. So we'll be ready for that as we come in on the ILS here at Salinas. Notice that because we execute the mist at 302 feet, we may very slightly drift below that altitude as we configure for the climb out. This is okay and is actually built into the approach. We don't want to try to execute the mist approach before reaching 302 feet. If the mist procedure called for a turn and we started it too early, we could risk losing our obstacle protection on the procedure. So don't jump the gun on going mist, but certainly don't delay past the decision altitude either. So that's the precision approach. What about a non-precision approach like the VOR into the opposing runway at Salinas? We don't have vertical guidance, so there's no glide slope to help us identify a missed approach point like on the ILS. On this particular approach, we'll use DME to identify it. The approach plate tells us explicitly that DME is required for this reason and a few others. Our minimum altitude is 580 feet for the straight in approach. We'll use DME to identify the final approach fix, SAMES, which is at 4.9 DME, as well as the missed approach point at 1 DME from the Salinas VOR. This time, 580 isn't a decision altitude, but a minimum descent altitude. The keyword is minimum, we can't go below it. To give ourselves a buffer, we can add 50 feet to this and say we'll level off our descent at like 630 feet instead. So we'll start outside of SAMES at 1600 feet. At the fix, we'll descend to 630, level off, and if we don't get the runway in sight, we'll go missed at 1 DME, not before and not after. So from the descent, we're looking to level off around 600 to 630, and we'll look at the DME displayed at the bottom of the PFD. When it reaches 1.0, we'll execute our missed approach. Let's look at one more approach for a different way we may need to identify our missed approach. This is the VOR into Santa Barbara, runway 25, a bit further down the fogged in coastline. If we had DME, we could identify the missed approach point as 14.7 DME from the Gaviota VOR. But unlike the last approach, DME isn't required. So without it, what we'll need to use is good old fashioned timing. The plate includes a timing table showing for various ground speeds what the time will be to travel from the final approach fix to the missed approach point. It's just a simple distance and rate calculation. We should know our aircraft's typical approach speed. We'll use 90 knots. Going the six miles from the FAF to the map at that ground speed should take us four minutes. So we'll want to time our descent from the FAF and execute the mist after four minutes. Now, how can we identify the FAF without DME? The ZAX intersection is on the 145 radial from another VOR at San Marcos while we're on the approach course. 
so if we have dual VORs, we can identify it. No such cross radial would exist for the missed approach point, though. The MDA for this approach is 920, so we can add 50 to that for a buffer just as before. Crossing Zax will start our timer, level off above the MDA, and if we don't see the runway, go missed at 4 minutes. Here it is in the cockpit. The winds right now at Santa Barbara will be 5 knots in our face. So if we fly the approach at 95 knots indicated airspeed, we should be close to that 90 knots ground speed we identified on the plate. We can set the timer on the G1000 to 4 minutes. Remember, your IFR equipped aircraft has to have a minute and second capable clock for reasons like this. We have our cross radial set up on the HSI to identify the final approach fix. And when we cross it, we start our descent and our timer. We level off above the MDA and we still have more than a minute to go. If we kept our ground speed pretty close to 90 knots, by the time four minutes is up, we should be at that missed approach point, which was a half a mile from the runway, and we can make our missed approach climb out and turn. Definitely not an exact science like some other missed approaches, but with the time to map along with the other procedures we've looked at, you've got an idea now of what different kinds of missed approach points and missed approach procedures look like.